Hello everyone, my name is Andy Means and I'm here to walk you through the on-off tool we have here at Fantasy Labs. This is an important tool for DFS and sports betting because it shows how a player has historically performed when a teammate is off of the court or out for an entire game. We can then use that information to help give us an edge in projecting future performance in similar situations. As you can see here, I'm on the page right now. To navigate here from any Fantasy Labs page, you just go to the top of the screen here and scroll down to on-off. So what we have here, I have a, a Phoenix Suns query up. As you can see over here, we have a bunch of uh, a different drop downs to help you navigate to where, what you're looking for. You have a bunch of different seasons. You can also use custom dates, which really helps um, when, you're, when you're in the middle of a season. You have regular season, you have playoffs, etc. cetera. Uh, one that we'll use a lot. Per, 30, per 36 minutes, you also have per one minute. So basically, you know, what a player is like on a per minute basis, totals per game, etc. Advanced rates here, standard rates. So advanced will be like usage rate, assist rate, and then your standard rates will be, or your standard stats will be points, rebounds, etc. You can check these boxes if you're trying to narrow down the, the players you're looking at or the games you're looking at. So let's look here real quick. We'll do uh, the Phoenix Suns with, let's see what happens when, let's take Chris Paul off the court and let's take Kevin Durant off the court. So this is just an example of what you'll see. This is when you see this, this will be thinking, running all the things behind the scenes. As you can see here, you can sort by minutes. You can sort by a bunch of different things. Who has the highest usage rate? So what I would do here when I'm using this tool is I will almost always sort by first usage rate to see who has the highest usage rate when these guys are off the court then I will look and go to per minute. because so I wanna see who has the highest per minute when these guys are off the court. As this is thinking right here, you can see over here we'll be sorting. I wanna sort over here. So you see Devin Booker has the highest DraftKings per minute production when Chris Paul and uh, Kevin Durant are off the court. And then you'll also be able to look at differential. So. If I go down here and I look sort here, you'll see this is obviously pre-trade because Cam Johnson isn't on the team anymore, which you can which you can filter out right here, or you can also what I do sometimes is I just use the custom date and go back to when the actual trade actually happened. But you can see here that Booker's per minute rate goes up by 0.1 fantasy points per minute. Aiton's goes up a little bit as well, similar similar range. So that's what you want to look to use when trying to figure out who does something better or worse when certain players are off the court. Uh, but yeah, there's a bunch of different ways you can use, use that tool. That's how I generally use it. This is also a good tool to use if you want to bet props and I'll show you a good way to do that. Let's like, let's search for a different team. We'll go down to Portland. Um, so here you can see that the Portland information is starting to load. What I'll do is I'll set a custom date and let's use basically the, let's use basically the, uh, around the trade deadline, this, this past regular season. And this is where I use, uh, the standard rates a lot. So like if you use, let's take Damian Lillard off the court. Like if Dame gets ruled out, I want to know, I want to look and see whose production spikes and, at, and and in what regard so I can be looking at props. So like here are all the usage rates we see, you know, Anthony Simons, a 33% usage rate when, when Damian Lillard's off the court. Well, I want to see what he, what he actually gets for points so, so I can relate that to the prop markets. So you see here, I want to go to, and I like using per 36 minutes just because that's a very popular NBA stat when you're looking at actual counting stats. Because generally speaking, the best players play around 36 minutes. So you can see here by sorting by points, Anthony Simons averages 29.8 points per 36 minutes in this sample of 92 minutes when Damian Lillard is not on the court. So let's say Damian Lillard gets ruled out, sportsbooks release their prop lines, and Anthony Simons' uh, points prop is like 23 and a half. Well, I'm going to want to hit the over on that because I see in this sample that he has he's averaged almost 30 points per, per 36 minutes when Dame is off the court. So that's a couple of different ways I use this tool. A lot of it is very, very self-explanatory with these drop downs over here. You can, you can get this data to spit out pretty much exactly whatever data, data set you want. 
And then there's all sorts of different ways to, to filter through these things, whether it be what actually happened with the stats or how it differs from what it uh, would be with that player on the court. So a bunch of different ways you can, can navigate through all this stuff. And then the last thing I want to um, point out here is the game flow tracker, which I personally use a lot when looking at r rotations. I want to see who comes in for who. I want to see who started. I want to see who might not have played normal minutes due to foul trouble. So like, let's just pick a random game here. Um, let's look at this game right here between Portland and Boston. So you click that game. This this game flow tracker will pop up. Let's just look at uh, we'll just look at Portland here. So as you can see, Damian Lillard started, Reddish started, Jeremy Grant, Nurk, and Tybal. You can see that those guys are starting just by the way these bars set up. And then at you know at this at this point of the game, Dame went out. Watford came in, Reddish came in, Jeremy Grant went out, and that's kind of how you can see who's subbing in for who. And then another thing to look at here is the personal fouls, which is really, really one of the things I use a lot because I want to see, like a lot of the times you'll see, let's say Damian Lillard, if his bar ended like right here, uh, where this 14 is, well, maybe that's where he picked up, uh, you know, a third foul on the coach sat him. You can see these things just by clicking inside of, clicking that bar and you can see every stat that was accrued while that rotation happened. So that's one thing I use this for. And then I so suppose a lot, the last thing I want to mention here on the game flow tracker is I use it a lot for minutes allotments when looking at previous games. Like if I'm looking at just a box score, I see, oh, Dame only played 30 minutes, 31 minutes. Why'd that happen? Well, you look here, he didn't play the entire fourth quarter because this you see the score, you see the game was out of hand. You can hover over these dots down here and it shows the scoring differential at different points of the game. So you see here, Right about when maybe Dame when it came in for the his fourth quarter rotation, it probably would have been you know at the eight minute mark. But at the five or six minute mark here, they were down by twenty one. So the coach just said, "I'm not bringing Dame back in." So Dame doesn't play his fourth quarter rotation; just plays thirty to thirty one minutes. That's some of the stuff I use for this game flow tracker. It's really really helpful when trying to figure out exactly what happened in a game that a box score will not tell you. Obviously, a lot of this other stuff a box score will tell you. Like as we see here with you know points and whatnot, but the game flow tracker kind of uh, hones in a, li a little more on those things to to help tell a story of what happened in the game. And that will be it for this tutorial. Enjoy the new tool, and we will see you guys in the DFS streets and the prop streets.